Algebraic proofs. Algebraic proofs are probably the one proofs that most students understand and they make good concrete examples of how a proof works. So if at any point you struggle with understanding a proof, come back to this, re-watch it, and help yourself to understand proofs a little better. In this section, we're going to use algebra to write a two-column proof. Previously, we've talked about paragraph proofs. Now we're going to into two-column proofs. The biggest thing here is understanding the properties of equality and how to use them in a geometric proof. The tools we need to sell your case to the judge. That's what you're doing. You're proving yourself to be correct. In order to do this, we're going to use the properties of equality. I'm going to go fairly quickly through these, so if you need to, pause at any time so that you can have them in your notes. The reflexive property tells us everything is equal to itself. For every number a, a will always equal a. The symmetric properties says for all numbers a and b, if a equals b, then b must equal a. The transitive property, very similar to the law of syllogism, for all numbers a, b, and c, if a equals b and b equals c, then a must equal c. The addition and subtraction properties tell us for all numbers a, b, and c, if a equals b, then a plus b is equal to b plus c. Also, in the subtraction property, a minus b equals b minus c. You use this problem all the time when you're solving problems, solving algebraic equations. In order to solve the question here that says x minus 7 equals 2, we use the property of addition to add 7 to both sides. So we're using the addition property to get x equals 9. That's the addition property. The multiplication and division properties are very similar. As long as we have two expressions, a times c and b times c, being equal to each other, we know that the expressions are going to be the same. So we're going to subtract 7. What property was that? Subtraction, if you were saying that. Great. Now we have 3 times x equals 6. In order to solve this, we are going to use the division property. We're going to divide by 3 on both sides and we get to the final solution of x equals 2. So in this one question, we use the subtraction property and the division property. We also have the substitution property. Notice on the left we have if 4 over 2y equals 6, then 2y equals 6. We've taken 4 divided by 2 and changed it into 2. We've substituted. Written out, it is a bit confusing and a bit wordy, but here it goes. For all numbers a and b, if a equals b, then a may be replaced by b in any equation. If a equals b, and 7a minus 22 equals 17.8, then we can also say 7 times b minus 22 equals 17.8. The distributive property, we've used this a lot in math already. If we have parentheses with the 3 in front of it, so we have 3 times the quantity x minus 2, we take 3 times x and 3 times the negative 2 and get 3x minus 6 equals 42. The definition or the property says for all numbers a, b, and c, a times the quantity b plus c may be written, rewritten as a times b 
plus a times c. Here's an algebra problem. Please show all of your steps as you go. Our first step would be to take and distribute the 3. 3 times x is 3x. 3 times 5 thirds would leave us with just the 5. The two 3's cancel each other out. Equals 1. What property did, did we use there? The distributive property. Step 2. We need to move the 5 to the other side. What property did we use? The addition property. Finally, divide by 3, which means we're using the division property to get to our answer of x equals 2. In this example, we've done half of a proof already. We've completed the left-hand side of a two-column proof. All we would need to do is write down on the right-hand side all of the things that I was saying as I went along. I was using the, the distributive property, the addition property, the division property to solve that question. Here we go. We are going to write that two-column proof for the question we just did. So what was our first step? Our first step was to write down the given information. 3x minus 5 thirds equals 1. Remember, that is always the first step in all of our proofs to write down the given information. The reason that we have that information, it was given to us. In a two-column proof, that's exactly what you have. You have a column of statements and a column of reasons. Our first step is done. Our second step, 3x minus 5 equals 1. Do you remember the reason that we were able to say that? Hopefully you remembered the distributive property. And it is definitely okay to abbreviate. Distributive property. Next, we added 5 to both sides. The reason we were able to do that is the addition property. Now, step 4, we have a new equation, 3x equals 6. The reason we were able to do that is because we substituted out negative 5 plus 5 for a 0 and 1 plus 5 to get 6. So we have this substitution property. Okay, on to step 5. Here, we divided by 3. Our reason, obviously, is the division property. And our final step, if I stay on the right slide, is to state that x equals 2. And again, the reason we're able to do this is because of the substitution property. We substituted 6 divided by 3 with a 2 and 3 divided by 3 with 1x. You've just completed your first two-column proof. Okay, stop the cheering. We've got to keep working. Please pause the recording and try and complete this proof. Once you think you have it, turn it back on and compare your answer with mine. Okay, 
Hopefully you have taken the time to try and attempt this proof. The given information was 7 times the quantity 2x plus 1 equals 63. That was given. We then distributed the 7, the distributive property. Next, we subtracted 7, the subtraction property. As we reduce that down, we do that through the substitution property. We divide it by 14, which is the division property. And lastly, we substitute it out to get our final answer of x equals 4. There's a proof. Hopefully you're able to complete that without much trouble. Here's one that looks a little bit different because we have more of a geometric example. The first thing we need to do is identify the given information. Remember, the given information is our hypothesis. We have the measure of ABC, the measure of CBD is 90 degrees. There's one piece of given information. We also have the measure of ABC is equal to 3x minus 5 and the measure of DBC is equal to x plus 1 over 2. All of that was given to us. That is our hypothesis or our given information. Our conclusion then is what we're trying to prove. We are trying to prove that x is equal to 27. When you set up a good proof, the first thing you should do is show your given information, like I've circled on the screen. We want to write down the given information, and we also want to write down what we're trying to prove. It may seem a little redundant. It is, however, a very certain technique that we use, and it has been proven over time that most people have success when they set their proofs up in this way. Our next step is to begin the proof. Remember, our first step is to state the given information. Here we have our first three steps of our proofs. And the reason that we have these first three steps is they were all given to us. And it is okay to use the ditto marks, which means the reason for that step is the same as the reason for the step above it. As we continue on into our next step of our proof, we notice that in step one, we have ABC, and in step two, we have ABC. In step one, we have DBC, and in step three, we have DBC. So what we are going to do for step four is simply combine these three statements into one. So I'm going to replace ABC with 3x minus 5. Hang on, smart board's acting up. So I replaced ABC with 3x plus minus 5 and I'm going to replace CBD from step 1 with x plus 1 over 2. And from step 1, we see that that should all equal 90. So what we've done is we've used steps 1, 2, and 3. We'd like you for, for you to note in your reasons which steps you're using, and then the property, substitution property. So we combine steps 1, 2, and 3 along with the substitution property to come up with a new statement. Next, we're going to try and solve this or move through the proof to come to our answer. For step 5, we're going to multiply the equation in step 4 by 2. What allows us to do that is the multiplication property. So we are using ste statement 4 along with the multiplication property to come up with our new statement, which is 
6x minus 10 plus x plus 1 equals 180. Remember, we multiplied everything in step 4 by 2. Now, the reason we're able to do that is, again, the substitution property. For step 6, we're going to move 9 from the left side to the right side. The reason we're doing that is we have a negative 10 plus 1, which is negative 9. So we're going to use the subtraction property to move 9 from the left side over to the right side. Now we're left with 6x plus x equals 189. What allows us to do that is steps 4, excuse me, steps 6 and 7 and the substitution property. Now our last step is to divide by 7 on both sides. Obviously, that would be the division property. And last but not least, step 10, we're going to say x equals 27 because of statement 10 using steps 8 and 9 and the substitution property. Now this one was a little bit more involved, but it did hold a lot of the similar techniques that we had been using in the previous two proofs. Please come to class with any questions you may have had on this one and we can work through them together.